It's the most incredible thing, the most incredible gift I ever received in my life was to be given a simple set of instructions that would allow me to discover what was um, completely stable um, in my own experience, what was completely dependable, what would give me the capacity to be able to respond in each time, place and circumstance in a way that was of most benefit to myself and to other people. Um, to know the nature of reality, to know the nature of mind and the nature of identity, and all three of those are synonymous. And um, to discover more and more in myself that the ideas I learned about who I was and what reality was and how I needed to act and behave in the world were actually just that. They were ideas that I'd learned from other people. And in the Balanced View training, what we um, are encouraged and supported to discover is the actual nature of reality and the actual nature of identity for ourselves, based on our own direct experience, not on learned concepts and ideas that come from other people. And the starting point is always to recognize what is the nature of reality right now. And if you stop thinking for a moment, notice what remains. Notice that there is an intelligence that's naturally present. There's something that's aware of what's going on. There's something that is aware of the next thought that just spontaneously pops into your mind stream. There's something that has the capacity to know and to experience. And in the Balanced View training, we call that open intelligence. And um, that term is actually very powerful because it demonstrates and explains exactly what it is that's looking through our eyes. It's wide open and it's vast like a clear sky. It's completely open. And the way that we know it's open is that it allows, in a completely effortless and spontaneous a, a way, for all of our experience to continue happening in a seamless flow. So, look at your own experience and uh, examine it for yourself, just by relaxing completely. And what I discovered when I began to do that, just for short moments, was that every thought, emotion and sensation arose spontaneously. So there was no way that I could control what I was going to think or feel in any particular moment. And it would change from moment to moment and day to day. And I began to see that it was spontaneous, so it would just appear. But what else can I say about my experience, based on looking at it for myself, not what other people have told me? So one question that you could ask is, is it possible to hold any experience in place? Can I fix my experience? Can I hold on to any really um, pleasant or positive idea or experience? And you could think back to the last time that you felt really happy, or ecstatic, or blissful, or whatever it is, the really nice descriptions. And was it possible to hold on to that experience? Or at some point, did you notice that it had gone? And that perhaps now I felt bored, or I felt flat, or I felt even miserable? And then you can think back to the last time that you actually felt really miserable. And was it possible to hold on to that feeling or that description? Or at some point did you actually realize, oh, I don't feel so bad anymore. Or perhaps I feel ecstatic again now. Or maybe I'm bored again. So what we're seeing in our own experience is that this seamless flow of experience is completely unpredictable. And that the way, conventionally, I had been trained to use my um, intelligence and my energy and my time was to try and control that flow, to make it um, flow in the direction of positive descriptions, to try and make myself feel happy, and to try and make it flow away from the negative descriptions, sort of depression and boredom was a, a negative one, um, anger was another negative one, to try and avoid or um, get rid of these descriptions. And basically, what I came to see through the practice of short moments of actually just allowing my experience to be as it was, just relaxing all of the descriptions about what was going on, just for one short moment, I discovered that at the basis of all of my experience was the same open intelligence. 
It didn't matter what the description was. It didn't matter whether I'd labelled it as positive, negative or neutral. It didn't matter how I described it. All of those descriptions were based in and had their source in the same open intelligence that's looking through your eyes right now. It's not far off or mysterious or esoteric. It's very um, immediate. And as I began to test out the suggestion that for short moments, repeated many times, I could just simply relax the need to describe everything that was going on and recognize that open intelligence was naturally present, then I saw that actually this whole endeavor that I'd been engaged in of trying to control my experience, pushing it one way and trying to push it away from the other way, more positive, I want more good things, I want less bad things, was actually completely unnecessary. And that as I began to relax with that whole game, then I began to discover what the actual nature of reality was. Because I'd been so focused in on that game, completely absorbed in it, I'd created this identity, I'd given it lots of names and descriptions, and built into this identity were the things that I thought were good, the things that I thought were going to make me happy, the things that I thought were bad, and the things that I thought were going to make me unhappy. And I created this whole world of descriptions based on this basic premise and this individual separate identity that needed to struggle with his experience to try and make it look in a particular way. And in the first short moment of complete relaxation, that whole game was undone. I saw through it for myself, in my own experience. I saw that actually what I'd been looking for, this search for some kind of genuine and lasting satisfaction, was to be found in the recognition of open intelligence and nowhere else because all of the descriptions were changing all of the time. If we recognize that, then how can it be possible for us to find any lasting satisfaction in any set of descriptions? If they're always changing, it is impossible. So that whole struggle of life is basically trying to do something that is impossible. And that is why it is frustrating because one morning we'll wake up happy and the next morning we'll wake up miserable and nothing may have changed. The circumstances are the same. So instead, the opportunity that we have here is to train up a completely different approach in living life. The results in my own experience of trying to manage my data, of trying to make it look in a particular way, and then when it didn't, what I had to do was to try and work out why I wasn't happy, for example. I had to try and look for a cause as to why I wasn't feeling the way that I wanted to feel that day. And I'd learned that there were an awful lot of causes for my unhappiness. So many. And the incredible creativity that is the actual nature of who we are was poured into finding causes for why I was feeling unhappy. Um, so, a few examples, um, I don't have enough money, um, I don't have a career, uh, I don't have a girlfriend, or I do have a girlfriend. <laughs> Either one of those was causes of great unhappiness <laughs> and difficulty. Um, what else? Oh, I'm, I'm, fi I'm not feeling very well physically. Um, another one is when I look online and I see what's going on in the world. And it became clear to me, oh, the other cause of unhappiness, of course, it's other people generally. Oh, it's just so obvious. So then when I was looking for the causes and I found these causes and every moment I could find a reason or a someone or something to blame for the way that I was feeling was that I was in constant conflict with everyone and everything and when I couldn't find anyone else to blame it had to be my fault there's something wrong with me and this is such a painful way to live and the way that it affected my everyday life was that 
I was so caught up in trying to understand what was going on, it was um, total obsessive self-focus and self-concern. Completely obsessed with what I was thinking, what I was feeling, how what other people did and said related to me and what I thought about it. And practically what that meant was that um, I had no openness of relating with anyone, including myself. Because all I was doing was relating based on the ever-changing stream of data, the thoughts, emotions and sensations. Very, very narrow, limited perspective that had no stability and openness. Collapsing my intelligence, my identity into these descriptions. In a short moment, of opening intelligence, allowing it to open, simply by relaxing this habit of collapsing into data for one short moment, what I discovered was that actually there is this completely different way to relate. I can always relate from a position of complete open-heartedness. Openness of perception is always the basis of my experience. And through training that up, what happens is that there is less and less emphasis placed on the data descriptions. We allow them to flow on by, and I see that I do not actually have to base my relating on my thoughts and feelings and sensations of that moment. Instead, I base it on open intelligence that is the actual basis of what's going on. Practically, that means that... Um, um, Oh, God, I'm trying not to swear. I'm really trying not to swear. And being that I don't have to be an asshole, I think would be a good way of putting it. Um, either to myself or in my relating with other people. Because when my relating is based on what's wrong, who's to blame, whose fault is it, and what needs to change, that is a completely different way of relating than completely relaxed, carefree openness. And the practical results of making this choice in my life and then seeing what I could do to support myself to train this up. Because some descriptions I was so used to emphasizing and I'd been emphasizing for decades that it was impossible to relax and to allow them to be as they were for a short moment. Some relationships seem so fixed and um, the way I related was so habitual collapsing into the stories about what was going on, why I felt irritated by this person, what I needed to do about this feeling of irritation, rather than just relaxing and recognizing that the irritation and the anger and the boredom were all inseparable from the vast expanse of open intelligence, with a dynamic energy of open intelligence. And by allowing them to be as they were, they became the fuel for beneficial action and speech. Instead, I collapsed into them, so I needed support to support myself to remain completely grounded in open intelligence. And the results were dramatic. I began to be kind towards myself. My negative thoughts and feelings and sensations about myself became my reminders to relax and rely on open intelligence, rather than being lost in these descriptions. This nagging little voice going on in the background, Oh, why did he say that? You shouldn't have done that. Oh, they don't like you now. Oh, God. And in a short moment, I saw that I can relax and allow those to be exactly as they were. That they didn't actually accurately describe who I was, because who I was was not this little... Um, feeble victim of what was going on in my own experience and in my own mind, what I was discovering was actually that I was this vastness of intelligence that was the intelligence of the universe. And this was not what I had learned. I learned that I was this um, separate, isolated individual whose job it was was to try and manage his experience, to struggle with his life, to try and convince other people that I was this kind of person, that kind of person, to put on these different personas and identities, to be this person, to be that person. And when I relaxed and I recognized the vastness of intelligence, all of those ideas began to open up. But some of those ideas, particularly the ones about how limited I was, they seemed so real. 
And so when I came across something that said, you hold the intelligence of the universe in a usable way. What an affront, how outrageous, how dare they say that? Don't they know that I'm a victim? Don't they know that I'm this little being that is um, troubled by this thought and that emotion and this experience? How challenging, how dare they claim that? But actually what I've come to see is that the ideas of limitation that I'd learned were ideas of limitation that I'd learned. And the open intelligence that learned those ideas of limitations was never affected by any of them, was never limited by any idea. It includes all ideas. Like the vastness of sky includes everything within it and is not limited by anything in it. Like the vastness of space includes everything within space. Everything. And is not limited by anything that appears within it. This is the nature of our own minds. This is the nature of reality. This is the nature of our, our identity. And um, it is very, very common for people to be provoked by what they hear in the Balanced View training, to be given a really good poke. And people that are really genuinely interested and genuinely open will take that as an opportunity to open up that data and to clarify and to recognize that too as open intelligence. Because otherwise there is just collapse into small-mindedness, into limitation, into this way of living that creates conflict, hatred, misunderstanding, confusion, both personally and for us as a global society. So if we really want to do something to change the world, it has to start with us. It has to start with each one of us, one short moment at a time. That's the way that I can start. And if I'm serious about that, then there's an education available that will allow me to access that in all aspects of my life. I just need to decide whether that's what I'm really serious about doing. And for me, it's like the most incredible thing that I've ever come across. And I'm so serious about it. Every time I look online and I read the horrible things that are going on there, I'm, this has got to stop. This has got to stop. I don't want to play this game anymore. I want to play the game of being an empowered, open-hearted, loving human being. That's the game I want to play. And I want to play it with other people that are also happy to play that game and to play it together, to empower each other for the benefit of all. That's what's being taught here. So if you're interested, you're in the right place.